India has created history A spacecraft has landed near the lunar south pole for the first time in human history. India's Chandrayaan 3 mission and its Vikram lander touched down on the moon's surface with the procedure going exactly as planned. With this, India becomes only the fourth nation ever to land on the lunar surface. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. Let us all wait to hear from the Secretary, Department of Space and Chairman ISRO, Sri S. Somi. ISRO scientists were overwhelmed with joy as their last attempt four years ago ended with a setback. We have achieved our goal flawlessly from the day we started rebuilding our spacecraft after Chandrayaan 2 experience. It has been breathe in, breathe out Chandrayaan 3 for our team. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi watched a landing live from South Africa. He congratulated the scientists and the nation on this historic feat. Uh, applauding. Let us all wait to hear from the Secretary Department of Space and Chairman ISRO, Sri S. Somnath. Yepal, ab vishmanani hai. Yechha, abhutpurva hai. ये क्षण विकसित भारत के संखनाद का है ये क्षण नए भारत के जयघोष का है As India makes historic landing on the moon, we are now being joined by our senior correspondent Siddharth MP from Bangalore and Arup Das Gupta, former deputy director of ISRO from Ahmedabad. Hello to both of you and a very great congratulations on this achievement to you both. I'd like to start with our correspondent. Uh, Siddharth, you've been there from the very beginning and this is absolutely a momentous moment for ISRO's control room. How is the mood on the ground? So ISRO can't be happier. India can't be happier, Susan. Can I tell you that, uh, you know, here 1.4 billion hearts are swelling with pride. And, you know, just about 20,000 persons working at ISRO have made it possible. That's the power of science. That's the power of knowledge. With what they've done, they've made so many people happy. They've made so many people ecstatic. You know, let me tell you that uh, the Indian space program often comes for criticism saying why isn't India focusing on other priorities? Why is India spending, you know, millions or perhaps billions of dollars on a space program? Is this essential and so on? Moments like these prove why a space program is essential. Let's also keep in mind that the benefits of the Indian space program are immeasurable. The ability to map the entire nation, the ability to map the oceans, the ability to study the oceans, to be able to predict cyclones, save thousands of lives, the ability to tell fishermen as to where the fish catch is and lead them to the fishing catch. And then let's also talk about the fact that space technology is making television possible. All the, you know, communication satellites that are helping us talk right now, Indian communication satellites all built in India. So this is the kind of advancement that ISRO has brought to the country. This is a moment that reinforces every penny spent on the Indian space program and I'm sure it's moments like these that will reinforce the feeling that more needs to be spent on the Indian space program more ambitions need to be achieved so that's the feeling here and the Indian Prime Minister emphasized more than adequately that ISRO's targets are Venus ISRO's targets are Mars both will be unmanned robotic spacecrafts landing on Venus and Mars in the coming years and of course the most immediate one Aditya L1 a mission to the Sun uh, in fact it's a mission to study the Sun from a vantage point 15 lakh kilometers away from the earth that's happening perhaps in a week or two from now after that there's the Gaganyaan program happening just next year or the year after that India's astronauts will go to the uh, uh, go to space to low earth orbit and then be brought back safely so you know there's no limits for the Indian space program now and this success is what they've been looking for what they've been waiting for for four years and it doesn't get better than this because the textbook like landing we were told by ISRO's director just now he's the head of the lead center that designs rockets and all space transportation systems one week ago he had told us you know personally that we're looking at a feather like soft landing 
and then now here we are feather like textbooks soft landing accomplished so that shows the confidence they had that shows the homework they've done and that shows that one failure is enough to learn adequate lessons of course not every country gets it right the first time or the second time few countries need multiple attempts despite their legacy and so on but in a single shot after chandrayaan 2 setback isro has been able to set the record straight and then you know there's yet another achievement for isro susan A feather-like soft landing, indeed. Uh, I want to move to our guest. First of all, once again, congratulations to you, Mr. Desgupta. How big is it, of an accomplishment is this uh, for India, and what makes lunar landing so challenging? Thank you, Susan, uh, and congratulations to all of us, because this is actually a global achievement, not just an achievement of India alone or of ISRO alone. What makes it so difficult? Uh, you see, uh, when you are going out from uh, away from the Earth and going to another celestial body like the Moon or maybe Mars, your communication time becomes very, very long. And therefore, you cannot do things sitting here on the Earth. You have to make the machines that you send more autonomous, more able to take decisions on their own. And this is what is the biggest challenge, not only for on the moon, for any other celestial body. Susan? So now that the Chandrayaan has landed, what happens next? Well, we're waiting. Uh, about three hours uh, delay, is, uh, not a delay, but a wait is there because uh, the moon dust which has been kicked up, even though it's been a feather touch landing, but nevertheless, certain amount of moon dust does uh, get kicked up. So this dust has to settle. And in the meanwhile, I'm sure the, uh, uh, the mission control is going through all the checks that are necessary to see that all the sensors and the systems that are on board are working perfectly. Uh, after three hours or so, the ramp will open and the Pragyan rover will come down the line at the ramp. And I believe the first thing that the two of them will do is take selfies of each other and send it to us. That done, the rover then starts moving around. It can move to about 500 meters away from the uh, lander. And it will be conducting several experiments at different points uh, in, in its uh, range of movement as well as the lander itself will be conducting several uh, uh, experiments with the sensors that are there on board. And this is going to go on for, I think, 14 Earth days, which is uh, one lunar day. Susan? Well, thank you so much for that. And as you mentioned, this is really a historic moment for India, of course. And everyone around the world, we did know that NASA and other space agencies across Europe were watching this landing very closely. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us.